In this presentation, the technique for fracture fixation using the 2.4 LCP radial head plate will be demonstrated. The objectives of the exercise are to show the clinical indications, the patient position and the surgical approach, the safe zones, and the surgical technique. The 2.4 mm LCP radial head plates are indicated for intra- and extra-articular fractures of the proximal radius and multifragmented radial neck fractures. The patient is positioned supine on the radiolucent table. The extremity is prepared from the axilla to the hand. This preparation allows rotation of the forearm as well as flexion and extension of the elbow during the fixation. Both radial head rim and neck plates fit within the Hotchkiss safe zone. The Hotchkiss safe zone is defined as an area of 105 degrees on the radial head that is free of impingement between the ulna and radius. This safe zone is located on the opposite side of the radial tuberosity. This is a three-part radial head and neck fracture. The anterior fragments are reduced using the pointed reduction forceps. A thread hole is drilled across both fragments with the 1.5 mm drill bit. The 2 mm drill bit is used to create the glide hole. Since these two fragments are in the safe zone, the screw head can be left somewhat prominent. But to make sure there is no impingement during full rotation, countersinking will be done to lower the screw below the subchondral surface. The depth of the hole is measured. Care must be taken when selecting the length of the screw because the proximal radial ulnar joint is on the far side. Therefore, the far cortex should not be engaged. The depth gauge reads 26 millimeters, but a 22 millimeter screw is long enough to give cancellous purchase on the far side without penetrating the articular surface. The star drive screwdriver is used to insert the 2 mm cortex lag screw, which compresses the two fragments. The screw head can be seen to lie below the subchondral surface. The forceps is removed and placed across the remaining intra-articular fracture. The next step is to insert a second lag screw. This screw will provide compression between the third fragment and the first two. The 1.5 mm thread hole is drilled first. The near fragment is over-drilled with the 2 mm drill bit. This screw hole does not need to be countersunk as it's in the neck portion, which is non-articular. The depth is measured to determine the screw length. It reads 26 millimeters. A 22 millimeter screw is sufficient. The screw is inserted. As it's tightened, it compresses the third fragment against the others. This screw is in the non-articular portion, so it should not interfere with the annular ligament or the proximal radial ulnar joint. The forceps is removed. The threaded LCP drill guide can be used to position the radial neck plate. Its correct position is on the neck and not on the top of the head. This position minimizes impingement during rotation. The ideal position is proximal to the articular surface of the radial head and in the Hotchkiss safe zone. A 2.4 mm bicortical cortex screw is placed in the shaft of the plate through the DCU portion of a combi hole. The 1.8 mm drill bit is used to create the hole. The depth is measured. The screw is inserted, but not completely. 
At this stage, the plate can still be adjusted by sliding it proximally or distally. The plate can also be rotated to a certain degree so that it fits correctly on the radial head and neck. When the optimal position is achieved, the screw is tightened. The threaded drill guide is removed, and a second cortex screw is placed in the shaft to lock the plate in position. The first screw to be inserted through the head of the plate into the radial head is a 2 mm cortex screw. This screw will pull the radial head firmly to the plate. The depth is measured. As with the cortex lag screws, this screw is a monocortical screw to avoid the radial head or the far distal radial ulnar joint. A 14 mm long screw is selected. The next screw to be inserted is a 2.4 mm locking screw. The LCP threaded drill guide is screwed into the plate hole. The drill guide positions the screw at the appropriate angle. A plate hole has to be selected that avoids the screws that were inserted earlier. The hole is drilled with the 1.8 mm drill bit. The depth can be read directly from the mark on the drill bit and the scale on the drill guide. Here, 16 millimeters. The drill guide is removed. The screw should not touch the articular surface of the radial head or the proximal radial ulnar joint. Therefore, a 14 millimeter long locking screw is selected. A second locking screw is placed at the appropriate angle. Locking screws provide a fixed angle support. The result of the fixation shows that the three fragments are aligned. The plate fixes the radial head to the shaft with good overall alignment of the head to the shaft. The plate is placed in the safe zone, distal to the radial head. The first 2 mm cortex screw is recessed below the chondral surface. Often there is comminution in these fractures that does not allow a complete anatomical reduction. The angle of the radial head is aligned with the shaft. The radial head is not at 90 degrees to the shaft, but rather at an angle of 10 to 15 degrees to the shaft. After the alignment has been accepted visually, Fluoroscopy should be used to examine the elbow for stability. The rotation of the elbow should be visually inspected to make sure that the plate or screws do not impinge on the annular ligament or collateral ligament. This presentation has shown the clinical indications, the patient position and the surgical approach, the safe zones, and the surgical technique.